So Sonny, tell me what you had for breakfast, man. I don't eat breakfast. <laughs> what did you have for lunch? I had a. Uh, I went to Earl's actually. Turn it up. I went yeah. to Earl's. We had chicken sandwiches. Oh, just like we had. I said we sat at the table right next to where we sat. Oh, I'm touched. Do you think about me? I did. I did. <laughs> Our deep chat. <laughs> yeah, where do you where do you live? You said you live in Mississauga. Yeah. Yeah. Is that near? Where is that? Near the airport, right? Fifteen minutes from here. Mm. He yeah. lives right where my parents live. Oh, okay. In fact, I went to Tecumseh, right? Yeah, my son's going there next year. <laughs> is that where Drake lives? <laughs> Who? No, but DeMar oh, used no, to live no. across the street. DeMar? Uh, DeMar? Used to, yeah, DeMar DeRozan. Indian, Indian row. Uh, Indian, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 516 Indian. I what? live right there. Did you see him, like, playing hoops in the, in the driveway or what? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> People thought it was me. Oh, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Little, little chubby Chala, <laughs> just yeah. dunking threes. You get confused all the time? Mm. <laughs> Sunny man. Uh, Are you recording? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're uh, I'm, dude, I'm you're very, a cool I'm very excited for this one. Yeah, very, it's, uh, very excited. I've seen this homie on Instagram. Yeah, I've seen the legend. But I think what's what's even more interesting about Sonny is like the stuff offline and just like the way he thinks and how he is just very philosophical and very thoughtful and very intentional. So I think from that's what I'm here to hear. But yeah, because like like, we I'm, we like actually you tell the story. I'm humbled, man. This is like a lot. This is a lot to walk into. I appreciate the uh, appreciate <laughs> the energy, though. I do. <laughs> no, um, this is wicked. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like I, I'm a dentist. I've been practicing dentistry for uh, almost 15 years, and you know my journey's taken a lot of different twists and turns. You know, started off uh, you know associating like most people, and then kind of just uh, built out uh, you know my first practice about 10 years ago. And the okay, hold on, hold on. Where where did you go to school? Detroit Mercy is where I went to Detroit. Uh, yeah, dental school. And in what Detroit. year did you graduate? Oh seven. Oh seven. So you know Hisham? Yeah. 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 Our homie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hisham he, was there. He graduated what? Ten? Or t- or nine? I think. Two thousand nine. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. Okay. So you went to Detroit Mercy. Yep. All right. You got some hood street cred li- behind I, you now. I, I can tell Detroit stories. You want to hear Detroit stories? Let's do it. <laughs> How about guys going out for lunch and coming back without their shoes? What? Yeah, man, you wear the wrong J's. They, they'll take your J's in Detroit. What do you mean they'll take your J's? They'll take your J's. I had a story. This guy went to lunch. Guy in my class went to lunch, went to the post office during lunchtime and said, hey, I'll be right back. Comes back. He's got his scrubs on. He's got his scrub pants on. He's got no shoes on. We said, what happened? He said, well, I was going to the post office. Guy said, hey, nice Jordans. He said, thanks. He said, what size are those? He said, 10 and a half. He said, cool, take them off. And the guy said, what? He said, I said, take him off. And he pulls a gun out. What? And he took his shoes off. So, like, you know, that's Detroit. That's what happens in Detroit. Oh, my God. I used to tell people, you know, and uh, things have changed. I mean, I got one of my associates went to Detroit Mercy. They moved to school to a different part of town. It's, it's been a different voyage for some people who maybe graduated Damn. there. But we had, we had stories. People would come out there. Cars would be on blocks. It was wild, man. It was wild. It was, it was wild. But we did a lot of cool dentistry, too. Like, I mean, <laughs> we, did, we did a lot of surgery. We did a lot of stuff. But... You know, it was, it was an interesting place to, to, to get an education, let's say it that way. I always tell myself, if I was ever going to go specialize, I would want to go to Detroit or Chicago. <laughs> yeah. Because that's where you're going to see gunshots to the face. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dead yeah. serious, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It happens. <laughs> you're not going to see that in Hamilton, Ontario. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not going to see that in Windsor. Well, you may see Maybe. that in Windsor, <laughs> but yeah, but like, you know, Dennis, you just got shot in the face. Break, man. Yeah. Like, Got you on the face. You need cool. a cleaning. When was your last <laughs> SRP? <laughs> the important questions. Dental history. <laughs> it's like these sweaters. Wear them on a plane. It's just oh, like yeah. he's having a heart attack, but he also has gingivitis. <laughs> oh, <laughs> more importantly. Right, have, more you, importantly. have you ever had to uh, do anything on a plane before? I haven't, but uh, you know, my, my mentor David Galler. Much of you guys know David Galler. He yeah. tells this great story about what happened to him on a plane. You know, he, there's a medical emergency, and he had to get the EpiPen. He didn't know how to use it, so yeah. he just, like stabbed himself. That's, a, that's what happens. What? That's what happens. You know, he, he didn't know what side is. Yeah. You know, oh, he's oh, heart it went up but he had a second epi pen i guess they they saved it down. it all worked out yeah but yeah no 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 I've, time, started, I've started two ivs on planes two what? ivs two ivs yeah two different days the same within one year apart and we were over the ocean and the uh this person like they were just low blood sugar and they were like super dehydrated uh they were thought they were going to turn the plane around oh yeah don't turn the plane around yeah and then they were like they saw uh, my buddy i never put doctor on my boarding pass because i'm just not that dude but my buddy did and he put uh, Dr. Chung. And then, so the air hostess came to, the, came to my homie and he was like, he was like, oh no, I'm a dentist, but he can help you. And he pointed to me and I was like, what? You're mid movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, okay. And so we, we go up, start, start an IV. We, uh, we have to call down to give him drugs. Like you have to, you can't just give him drugs. You have to call to like Mission Control, Air Canada, whatever. It's and wild. then the, the pilot let me into the cockpit, gave me his wings and everything, and saved what? the day. Yeah. So dentists are real doctors, y'all. There you go. Yeah. Well, if if you didn't believe it before, you know it yeah, now. Yeah. Do they have that stuff on a plane? Like yeah, they, they have, have everything. IV, they have oxygen. Like they have everything. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. 
Huh. Yeah, okay. and this, this nurse, super nicely, and she's like, do you want me to start the IV for you? And I was like, who the hell do you think you're talking to? I do IVs all day Were you wearing the sweatshirt? If you're wearing the sweatshirt, you should have been wearing the sweatshirt. Honestly, <laughs> if I was the person having the attack on the plane, if they're like, I'm just going to put this in. I'm a dentist. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, not, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm all right. Yeah. But what's sunny? You're like a you're like a maverick downtown. You have like a ton of practices. You you know you're you're and like I said you're very like thoughtful in, in, in how you do it. So why don't you tell the listeners about your like yeah professional go from Detroit to, to where you are today. Yeah. Man. So I, I mean uh, Detroit was a was a an experience. We had a good experience out there. And when I when I graduated, you know I um I ended up moving out west to Vancouver, uh in some of the suburbs out there. I was working in Langley. Uh, and having a good time in Maple Ridge, I was out there with uh, with some family. So I thought that I would move out there. My uncle had a pretty successful practice, and then it just didn't didn't work out for me there. I missed home too much. I'm the only one that moved out west and said, "Hey, this isn't right for me." Everybody goes out west and stays. Yeah. But uh, I came back to Toronto, kind of started from scratch. Was associating a bunch of different places. Saw, started from the bottom. Yeah, saw lots of different you know types of practices. Working in low income neighborhoods, working in you know um, ethnic practices, working in you know all different types of things. Downtown practices, uh, suburban pra- family. Practices practices and uh you know got the first got the opportunity to to, to get into my own practice uh, 10 years ago uh, 2013 and uh you know built it right on young street just a block north of uh of dundas square so like right in the what like downtown like in the gut yeah we're right we're right just uh just north of dundas square uh, tiny little thousand square foot practice, you know, and uh, uh, two, three operatories. And I remember um, there's a giant building going up across the street, uh, which at the time was probably the tallest residential building in Canada. And I thought to myself, I, I did something smart, right? I did something good here. Uh, this is going to be amazing. And then, you know, three weeks later, as we're going to check out the construction, literally three doors down, it's dental office coming soon. So I'm sitting there like, what the hell did I do here? And then the guy who was building that practice seemed actually, you know, he's got like seven or eight practices in the city. And here I am trying to figure out, yeah, you know, how to, run how, to, how, to, how, to, how to convert from being an associate to a, to a practice owner. And, um, you know, it was not a settling sort of feeling in, in, in what I was doing. But, you know, we opened up that practice and, and we built it out. We, we had the really good fortune of, of, of accelerating it, you know, to capacity in a couple of years. And small practice, you know, three operatory practice. But kind of faced with this decision point, you know, it's like, what do we want to do next is either we're going to, you know, you listen to consultants or you listen to people who have done versions of this. They say, look, you've got two, two pathways. You've got one pathway that says we can go and make your life a lot easier and make your business more profitable by raising your fees 30%. You will you will lose patience, but you will make more money on your you know P and L. You can get rid of staff. You can do a whole bunch of things there that that would actually make it so you can work less and make more. Um, but then the other option was like, hey, you can actually just keep growing this thing. And I think you know there's a there's a point of inflection for me at that point to say, look, who do you want to be? Who do you want to be in life? Because that option A was only good for me. It wasn't good for my patients who can no longer be my patients because I'm going to make them pay cash up front. It wasn't good for my staff that was sitting there and may, may or may not have a job because we're going to downsize because we're only going to be open four days a week. Uh, it was good for me. And, you know, I talk about finding, you know, who you want to be. And I think for me, it was a really, really interesting point of inflection. Say, I want to be about impact, growth, and connection. And impact, growth, and connection, if that's going to be the driving force, the North Star of how I go and operate, then I got to go have more impact. I got to grow more and I got to create more connection, not less. So, you know, we ended up finding a space, uh, a, a street over on Bay Street, and we, we built another practice. Uh, that thing started to, you know, ramp up, and I said, you know, we should do another one. So we, we actually ended up acquiring a practice, and then we bought, we built another one, and we built another one. So we've been kind of just on this thing. Sonny, I got a question for you. Yeah. I, I, first of all, I'm blown away, okay? I, I have a single practice in a rural town. Okay, don't get me wrong. I'm very happy where I am. And I love it. The aesthetic is amazing. I told you this on IG yeah, as well. The yeah. aesthetic is <laughs> it's, it's amazing. But, it's but dude, how do you have a... S- I just never understood this in dentistry. How do you have another practice, put your name on the door, and you can't be two places at once? Tell me about that. I think it's, a, you know, it's who you want to be, right? I think for me, I think the mission statement in my mind is always how do I impact as many people as profoundly as I can? And there's, ah, there's, there, there's the direct, hey, listen, my hands can go in there and, and, and take out AIDS or, you know, I do a lot of ortho and Invisalign. I can, I can treat a certain number of people, but can I scale my impact through other people? So, you know, this is why I go out. I, I, I teach. I lecture. I, I, I try to inspire my team. I spend a lot of energy on these things because I think at the end of the day, I said impact, growth, and connection, right? At the end of the day, we're just trying to figure out ways to go and scale that thing um, across as many people as we can profoundly do it. Wow. I've never heard someone like 
<laughs> the answer you usually get is, yeah, I want a boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's I'm a really good answer. scared of the water. I don't swim. I don't swim. So <laughs> a lot of us the brown, guys you know, don't. <laughs> I tried. It didn't work too well. COVID hit and I stopped. <laughs> I My parents back. have a pool. They don't know how to swim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. sick, man. But, like, okay, so when you were scaling from one practice to two practice to three practice, why did you choose? Because they're mostly downtown, right? Yeah, yeah. So why did you choose to be downtown? I think it's, well, it's, it's, you know, a little bit is, you know, the, the 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I'm sure it's the same now, but, you know, looking for a practice in a suburban, uh, you know, plaza, which we kind of, you know, yeah. see them literally in every plaza. I've been traveling and speaking all over Canada here and there. And I mean, li literally every plaza has got a dentist in it. And at the time when I was looking, you know, I was trying to get into one of these suburban practices, Oakville, Mississauga, you know, the, uh, the GTA around, around Toronto. And I was just getting outbid everywhere there's 10 dentists on the waiting list already yeah. uh, you want to buy that practice you just i had every dollar i th had my eyes on a practice and i put together every dollar i could possibly get and 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 they're like no you didn't get it and i was like you know what i want it if it's ten thousand dollars i'll find the extra 10 grand yeah. they're like you're in fourth place yeah so like you're not even close not even in the running you're not even in the running so you know this opportunity came up and i know it was going to be tough because we're in toronto it is densely populated yeah. but i also see opportunity you know at the end of the day there's 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 all kinds of people here i think i can make it work and i think you know um, that that community uh, is is the right community for like what the type of dentistry I was doing. I was doing a lot of wisdom teeth, yeah. young people, uh, ortho. So it was it was kind of the right fit for me. So yeah. it ended up working out all right for us. But Sonny, how do you manage more than one practice? Well, it, it, it would be it would be a, a complete lie to say you know I'm sitting there by myself you know uh, puppeteering uh, yeah. all these things. I think you know we got a team of people. We got a team of people that that, that have been with us and, and like do you have like hard. a whole like management side that like you have multiple people that go to practices every day because you're not eight places at once no i mean i uh, so my, i'm kind of splitting my time clinically and, and, and on the management side so i try to be as many places as i can yeah you know, i try to be as many places as i can but it, it's through people man i think at the end of the day the, you know I, I i talk a lot about you know our job as dentists is obviously to be clinically great and then you got into a practice and then you got to decide who you want to be yeah right yeah. because it's totally you know, listen, we're not trained in any of this I, I, a lot of my my best friends i should also mention this while, while i was building these dental practices i also started building medical centers uh, yeah. with dental practices and then with with friends of mine who are who are kind of half the team is in the medical space physicians physiotherapists that type of work and then the other half are just straight up business dudes yeah um working in tech and you know working in different things so that experience of kind of building that thing with them, I'm like, whoa, there's a whole different world here of leadership and, 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 and coaching and training and people and culture and all operations and efficiency and partnerships and all these things that we don't get. MOD, man, we got MOD, right? So there's a, there's a whole world out there that I was just sitting in the back of boardrooms getting exposure to that really I got interested in. And I'm a just incredibly passionate learner, right? If I, if yeah. I want to learn about something, I will... I will read everything I can about it. I mean, I think that that's, that's important to have that growth, again, growth, right? Impact, growth, connection. You want to grow. I want to figure out how, to, how I can get better at things. So just get super passionate about it. Do you, do you know how, like, uh, everything is funny? Every, life is a string of pearls. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard that before somewhere. Yeah. I've heard that. Yeah. Well, life is a string of pearls. One, one thing always leads to the next. Yeah. In, in my life, one thing led to me going to a small rural community, and it maybe have changed my growth path i didn't open up you know eight practices but what led you to going from one to two what was that thing that 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 with that allowed you to go from one to two yeah i think it's a couple of things i mean it's it's driving ambition to see what you can be right i think and now we're getting like philosophical i want to get thoughtful yeah. and philosophical it's like who do you want to be right like what are you trying to do and there's no like right or wrong answer to that you got to know who you are and for me it was pretty clear that look i want to go and be the absolute most impactful person that I can possibly be. And that, that, that sentence can be interpreted a hundred different ways. Yeah. Right? You, know, that, that you can do that a million different ways. But for me, I, was, I had exposure and I had some, some confidence around some skills around business and I was, I was willing to take risks. So I said, you know what, I, I see a pathway here. Um, there's a bunch of pathways I could have taken, but that and I said sometimes it's just this is what's in front of you. You know, like what are you, you going to make for dinner tonight? It's what you got. This is this is the opportunity. Yeah. I mean, you could go spend a bunch of energy on on a million different things, but that's kind of where it was, and just jumping after things, you know, and, and seeing yeah. what happens. But who held your hand through the the process? Yeah. Because there's like at, at different stages, like one I've, I've spoken to someone that's gotten to five, and it's like okay, one to two is really hard, two to three is really hard, yeah. and then like three to four, it's like okay, now how do we find efficiencies? Like what are we doing? Like if I'm just multiplying my work, why am I even doing this? Yeah. So like who is holding your hand through that whole curve? I think there's a lot of people, right? Like my, my business partners are, like I said, they're, they come from varied kind of places and, and, and provide me a lot of perspective on things. I, I think it's just like 
I'm just incredibly passionate about learning. And anybody I can speak to that's had experience, if I know someone who's built, I mean, I, I, I met people who built 50 practices. You know, it's like, tell me everything you know. Like, what, what have you gone through? I think, you know, this human experience is shared. The experience that we have as dentists is shared. This whole thing is, 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 is so similar, and, and it, would, it would be totally amiss not to try to take advantage of those conversations and learning totally. from people. So connecting with people, um, there's, there's t so many people, even just random conversations just here and there. You know, you just sort of pick things up and say, hey, look, I can, I can use it. I think the key to life, man, is, you know, I said growth or die. You've got you to be, be a learner. You know, you, you have to be incredibly passionate about growth and learning. Um, then opportunities come, right? Then things happen uh, by being curious. And, 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 and I think one of the biggest things I noticed in dentists, and maybe it's just humans in general, really, right? It's fear, right? We get, we get caught in this fear trap and battling yep. our own mental uh, energies and our mental space that we get kind of stuck and say, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I should. I don't know if anyone's was holding my hand. I think I just jumped sometimes, you know? It's like, we'll see what happens. What's the worst that's gonna happen? Yeah. You know, especially like, you know, we, I was talking just earlier before we started here about, about you know, the journey of life. You know, I, I didn't come from great wealthy places i mean you struggled and you tried things and you figured it out and that's yeah. kind of like the mentality it's like i have incredible faith and confidence in my ability to figure things out i always i tell my kids this i got two young kids i said listen we never lose you win or you learn and when you learn you learn enough to win the next time so you, no matter what you know you're gonna you're gonna win should i swear <laughs> fuck yeah <laughs> there's no such thing as losing you win or you learn yeah and then you my win the next time god Hell yeah, Sonny. That's it, man. Fuck yeah, yeah man. That, I'm with That's it, That's what man. I'm talking about. Don't get jacked up. Dude, <sighs> you win or you learn. I get in my head so much about the dumb shit I've done yes. and the dumb mistakes I've made, yes. and I take that as a knock to my self-worth. Yeah. You know what's funny? I, 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 I do this thing. I, I, got, I got real deep into, like, meditation and like kind of trying to understand the mind and were you microdosing mushrooms no i haven't okay. done that yet no, i can't I wait to I man haven't, i was I talking to a kill and i'm like i don't smoke weed but i'm gonna start microdosing pretty <laughs> but, soon. but here, here's what's interesting about how the brain works you know you start you start really understanding the way the brain works right the mind is 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 and it's everybody okay human experience there, i had this like learning where it's like there's a there's a monkey in your head okay and he's he he, he, he or she is just crazy like absolutely crazy he's gonna chase every butterfly that 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 passes by you don't have to pay as much attention to it as you believe that you have to, which is just a wild understanding once you can get there to be like, just because there are butterflies floating around and I'm chasing them, it doesn't actually have to mean anything. Like it's a weird, I'm getting too deep here, but no, there's a no. weird concept Go. here about like, why do we get in our heads? It's because we give so much meaning and weight to things that at the end of the day, you just made up. You just made it up. Like it's at the end of the day. Think about how ridiculous that is. And we're all human and we all do this and we all get so deep into I can't, I shouldn't, I did this terrible thing eight years ago and how can I live with my, man, it happened, it's over. Yeah. Bad things happen, man. Bad things, I'm going through some things right now. We'll talk about that later. But there's like, you know, things happen all the time. You got choices to make about how you go and like deal with it mentally. And so many of our human urges, you know, are, are, are going to make that difficult for us. So yeah. I don't know. I, I think meditation, probably the most important thing I've done in my life in the last five years. I don't miss a day. I don't care what's happening. That, yeah. that to, to get that space to, to separate from, uh, it's not about finding peace, it's about finding acceptance. Accept. It's okay. You're going to be good. Yeah. It's hard to take that step back, though. It, it, for sure. Is for that sure. something you learn in like retrospect? But in the moments, like, do you get heated? Do you? Oh, I'm human, man. I'm, man. You know, so I, I, I do a lot of personality work, right? So, like, I, I do disc profiling, right? So, I'm a red, okay? I'm, I'm a dominant D. You know what they say about reds, right? They got the shortest fuse. They get excited. They get more passionate, more upset, more happy, more angry than everybody. I'm all over the place, always. But it's not to say you're not trying to, you're not trying to decrease your humanity. It's about taking perspective on it. You know what I mean? It's not taking perspective on it. It's like, like it's not that big of a deal. Nothing is that big of a deal. You know, you know Sonny, I 100% agree with you. I, through the podcast, I've shared the times where I've needed to learn, not fail, but learn. All I see right now is a super successful dude traveling the world, speaking uh, for Invisalign, killing it with eight practices. Tell me the time you learned. Ooh, I learn all the time, man. I learn. I man, that's, share that's it. A, that's show, a tough, show me a kink in your armor. That's a tough question, man. Um, there are, there you're, are, because you're fucking human at the end of the yeah, day. No, I'm going to make one, you human. No, man. no, 100. Because everyone listening to this right now wants to be Sonny Gill. Uh, <laughs> How do we get to that point? And I want to know that you're human, man. Tell me, tell let me, me about let me, the time. Let me, let me tell you. Here, here's an interesting story about what happened in my company. Um, we got eight practices. We have 60 employees on that dental side. We got 200 on the medical side. Um, we turned over 
65% of the company in a year and a half turnover. Why does that happen? That happens because, I mean, the initial reaction is always, well, uh, Sally is this, Jennifer is this, Michael was that, blah, blah, blah. They're terrible, they're terrible, they're terrible. Here's, here's the thing, here's the truth of it. There's the concept of the window in the mirror. Have you heard this before? No, tell me. There's a concept of the window in the mirror. You see, what we love to do as humans is we always like to look out the window and say, well, you know why everybody left and they had to quit and we had to fire people? It's because, you know what? They suck. Yeah. They suck. Oh, okay, they okay, suck. Okay, they yeah. suck because that's the window. It's out there. It's yeah. not me. Yeah. But when you go look in the mirror, you know I realize my leadership sucked. Okay? The way that we're actually putting this thing together and the culture that we're creating and how we're evaluating things and the things that we're valuing, are we, are we aligned to our values? Do we live it every single day? No, it's bullshit I can lie to right yeah. I swear to right it's, it's bullshit so there is a there is a moment there to be like you gotta you gotta reinvent it so I, I think that's another great exercise to be like look in the mirror it sucks it sucks to look in the mirror and be like it was me yeah. it was me who, who because at the end of the day yeah I didn't hire all those people but I said it was okay I said yeah 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 it's good and those things like crippled our company for a long time right when we have these kind of things happening but I think what starts to happen is that you start to look in that mirror and then you learn you learn something when you get over the it sucks what happens is that you start to realize that there's power there's power in the mirror because you have you have a sense of control you don't control the window when the, when the, when the problems out there the solutions out there but when, when you look in the mirror yeah, it sucks to say it's you, but the solution is also in the mirror. Dude, he's dropping so many pearls, man. <laughs> when the solutions out, when when the solutions out there, that's all you see. But really, it, it ends up in being it, in the it, mirror. It's, it's, it's the reflection. You have you power. You have for, power yeah. when you when you can have the have have the guts to sit there and say, "Yeah, it's me." Okay. And by yeah. the way, it's always you. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's what I'm learning. <laughs> what? Like, okay, like a, refle a reflection. Yeah. What drives crazy motherfuckers like us? Because we're here, like I've forgotten about the whole, you know, yeah. convention. We we're call having it a flea this flea market, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've forgotten about the whole flea market. We're okay. having this conversation. I don't know who's passing by or when. Yeah. But, you know, you guys don't need to be here. I don't need to be here. Why do we do this? Yeah, I, I got super clear on purpose, man. I told you it's impact, growth, and connection. I'm gonna look for anything in my life that can find me ways to move forward with impact, growth, and connection. Like that's it, man. And you can call it connection love, you can call it whatever you want, but that's what I'm looking. At. I think it, that, that's that's if it's aligned to those things and it gives me energy, I'm doing it. If it's not, I'm saying no. Yeah, <laughs> but there has to be some sort of like pathological, not pathological, but there has to be something in you that's like, you know. I'm not okay because you, yeah, you have a beautiful family. You can go home, you know, hang out with them. You don't even need to work anymore. Same thing with you. You don't need to work. I need to work, yeah. but <laughs> but like, what what drives people? Like, I'm saying us, but like mostly you two. Man, I I, I just I, I'm not I'm not satisfied with where I am right now, man. Yeah. It's, I think it comes down to this. It's, yeah. like, it's, it's like Maslow, right? He talks about that hierarchy yeah. of needs. Like you want to you want to exercise your full potential. At the Dude, end of the day, it. it's like. Here's what I would be upset by. If I'm sitting there on my deathbed and saying, ah, man, I could have been, yeah. I could have, I could have, I, I should have, I could have or I should have. And I think that's like, you want to be the, you want to become all that you can possibly be. I yeah. think that's what, it, I think that's what drives me. At the end of the day, it's like, I will sit there and obsess over things because I'm like, well, how can I be better? How, yeah. Am I leaving it all here? Right? Un am I leaving potential, it all here? potential, man. The, the fact that you know you can do something and then you don't seek it out for yourself to think that you're to actually make it a fruition, like to make it come to reality. But isn't that also a treadmill? Oh, like the everlasting thing? Yeah. Now, you're, now you're getting deep because if, yeah. you if you get to the other side of it, yeah, no, what we should do is we can, we, can get, we can get real Buddhist here and say, listen, just let everything go. Because <laughs> that's, I mean, that's the other side of it, right? I think it's a balancing act. I think, listen, I think, fun, I, think I think, I think in life, you know, there, there is so much of this yin-yang principle that's just everywhere. There's so much dichotomy, but there's also like it's symmetry at the same time. It's like as much as, hey, man, I want to chase things and I want to, I want to accomplish things and I want to, I want to see what I can be and I want to impact people and I want to, I want to leave great things here for the people that I connect and touch with and touch. I, I also sit there and say, I don't need anything, you know, and it's like this weird duality and I don't know how to like even describe that properly, but there's like this, I, 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 I trying to figure out how we live, you know, synchronously in both of those spaces where it's like, yes, but I want to chase things and I want to do things, but at the same time, not to the place where it's tipping so far that now it's pathological and I don't think about anybody and I just want to accomplish these things. Yeah. And at the same time, I don't want to let go of everything. I'm like, yeah, listen, my kids haven't eaten in three days, but listen, I'm, 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 on, I'm on something right now and I, I need to go chase this learning or whatever it is. So, so Sonny, tell me. How do you put ego aside? I don't. You've got to fight that, man. That's a human. That's a human thing. I have an ego for sure. My staff's here. They'll tell you. 
Um, <laughs> where, where do you have an ego? Like um, where? Like what? What? What is it? At work? Is it speaking? Is it family? Like where's your ego? I think man? it's. I think it's part of. You know, it's part of my persona, right? Like I, I think it's part of it, but I think. What, we're, what I'm always trying to figure out is like I think there's use for it at some times in life. Like you got to figure out how to how to use that. But a lot of times, like um, you know, it's everywhere, man. It's at home. It's at work. It's seeking. It's speaking. It's 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 everywhere. But I think like having those micro moments of being able to catch it, like those are the real learnings. Like, hey, did I really need to do it that way? The next time I do it, do I need to do it that way? I, I do this a lot when I talk about you know um, learnings about how to how to communicate with patients, right? And in my case acceptance conversations and all that type of stuff you know how do I do that do I do that in a way that you know it's like for me or am I here for them kind of an yeah. interesting like moment when you start thinking about how, how would I communicate if I was truly like it's not about me here it's actually about them yeah do you, do you sorry go no ahead. go you go do you find that like since you've been a dentist you've had to take these deep dives in order to communicate with patients better do you like, know what I mean? Like, if, what do you, you mean? Had, by, like, like, have you had to learn human personality? Oh man, this is, uh, this is like a passion, passion uh, yeah. a topic for me. This is like you know one of the key things I love talking about when I when I when I speak. It's like that the thing we get taught, the thing we get taught when we're when we're out there it's and, my homie. <laughs> and hey, uh, the thing we get taught when we, when we go to school and you're in that journey right now, right? What is it, man? It's about jump through this hoop, yeah. make sure your mesial marginal raise looks really good. Uh, you know, it's treatment, treatment, treatment. You come in here, this convention, people are here. What are they doing? What is everybody taking courses on? Uh, finding MB2. Yeah. Your, uh, by the way, your, your lecture was dope. Yeah. It's learning how to, how to clinically be excellent at what you're doing. And yes, 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 yes. It is absolutely foundational if you're going to be good at this game that you have to build up those skills. But I always say this. If our goal is to do treatment, right? And why is that our goal? I think all doctors, I think there are three reasons. They, 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 they care about helping people. They care about the craft. And they care about making money. And all three of those things only happen through treatment. So, yes, it makes sense to get good at the treatment. However, your job is not treatment. Your job is data collection, diagnosis, diagnosis to treatment plan, treatment plan to case acceptance. I don't care how good you are. If people do not say yes to you, you don't get to express the art of what we do. You don't get to help people. You don't get to make money. So I spend a lot of energy on just that. Yeah. How do we go and connect with human beings in a way that you want them to accept treatment? I have this thing I talk about where like education, education is what we're talking Educate your patient. You've heard this, right? Educate your patient, educate your patient. I'm going to start swearing. I'm getting passionate. Fuck that, man. Honestly, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. You don't educate your patient. You advocate for your patient. Because if you truly believe the things that you do, we're doing are important and that patient says no, you think my cardiologist friend is sitting there saying, all right, well, you let me know after you watch Netflix yeah. with your spouse. Let me know if you guys want to do the heart surgery. You think they're ever saying that? They're never saying that. We say, go home and think about the crown. Go home and think about the, go home and think about it. Let me know. Let me know. And we're inadvertently creating this culture that we complain about where patients don't take us seriously, where patients say, well, you know, my last dentist didn't say anything. He put a watch on that for 10 years and no big, if you believe what you're doing is important, if you believe in it, I don't educate my patients. I advocate for the right thing for them to do. I said, you're going to do this, and if you don't do it, well, I'm, I'm going to take it personally. Like, I really do. And Michael Jordan, the, the last dance keeps coming into my head. Yeah, and then I took it personally. What do you mean no? Because my cardiologist friend, it was, it was told no to a surgery. He's not sitting there being like, well, cool, I, well, yeah. I, I informed you. We do that. We make sure we write our notes really well. Yeah. I, how, you know how, I mean? how the hell did that come to be? Um, I, I, well... Lack is it because we don't want our feelings to get hurt? It, it's, it's fear, man. Yeah. It's, it, I tell you, I, what I've noticed, and I work with a lot of doctors in my practices, you know, I, when I, I, and I'm out there talking to docs, I think what happens is this. We, we have, we're human, okay? We're human beings. And when we're human beings, what do we all want? We all want to be loved and accepted. And when we meet resistance or we feel, we walk into that room feeling like this person doesn't like me, they don't like the dentist, and I don't want to offend them, and I don't want to overwhelm them with too many treatment options or too many treatments. Uh, maybe we'll just do the two crowns and save the other three for later. And I, don't want, I want you to like me. I want you to like me. We all want that. We all want to be liked. We all want to be appreciated. We all want that stuff. And I think what we've got to draw a line on at some point is like, yes, identify that in, in you. But you have a duty here, man, because if you don't sit there and advocate for those things, you think anyone's going home? watching Netflix and turning to their partner and saying, should I do the crown? And they're like, yeah, let's do it. That's a great idea. No, they're talking about going to Barbados. They're talking about what, what they want to watch. So if you don't do it, who's coming to save it? No one's coming. Can you have that conversation with me? <laughs> no, for real. How, how, do you, how do you convey that to a patient? 
Like what? What? What key words are you saying? I'll, I'll give you. I hundred percent agree. This is going to turn into an hour, man. This I don't is, care. I hope it goes to two and a half. Here, here, here's here's what it is for me. I, I've I've got a little bit of a formula that I've developed and how we how we want to do this with people. I think that, you know, number one, um, and 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 you got to find your. I don't like to script it out too much because I think everyone's got to be authentic in how they're how they're communicating with your patients. You can't be me. I can't be you. Yeah. Nor should you. Nor should I try to be like anybody else. But I think principally what I'm, what I'm always trying to do is number one, I'm trying to connect with people. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to build some type of rapport. No one's going to say yes to me unless they like me. Yeah. So I'm going to find something. I'm going to find something to vibe on, something to connect on, something something there. You got to see me as a human being, not as someone that's trying to sell you something. I understand some of the things that people come into the room with. You know, your patients will walk in there. And they're going to have a certain level, what I call, you know, it's, it's like how much, how much, how much um, do they know and how much do they care? That's awareness and careness, okay? And most people have pretty low levels of those two things. They don't know and nor do they care about the things that are happening in their mouth. So we always love to deal with those patients who are in the high upper right quadrant, right? They know and they care. Those are our favorite patients. You say it, they're like, yeah, let's do it. But most of our patients live below that line, so our job starts to become to go and bring them up to saying yes. So how do you do that? Number one, you got to like you. If people don't like you, I don't care what they say. Like, humans are humans, okay? There's a reason why you talk about flea market. You probably don't buy a lot of clothes at the flea market. Well, I probably don't trust the flea market very much, okay? <laughs> so you got you to have trust and you got to have connection. You got to have something about you as a brand, as, as how you're showing up that connects with people. That's, that's step number one. I always say in that first interaction, I also try to create alignment. The alignment is, why are you here? And the alignment is around this. It's like, I always, I always ask patients, I'm sure you do this, right? What can I do for you? Why are you here? What do they say to you? Uh, to get my teeth checked. Yeah, do you have my teeth checked? What was going on with your teeth? Nothing. Yeah. All right, cool. So it's like, I'm, it's just because. They give you some version of just because or something specific. Yeah. Okay, something specific you can drill down into. It's a pun, though. I, yeah. I, <laughs> I didn't mean it. Um, but it, when they give you that generic, just here for a cleaning, just to have a yeah, checkup, yeah. I'm just here because it's been, my mom yeah. told me to come, whatever the story is. I always kind of kick it back to this. It's like, look, so what I'm hearing from you is that it's, um, I, always, I, I ask a follow-up question. I'm like, well, why is that important to you? Uh, what I'm okay, doing okay. with this patient here now is I'm, set, I'm, 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 setting, I'm setting the baseline of why we're here, the, the alignment around why we're here. We're here because, say it. I'm not going to say it. You say it. Why are you here? Why yeah. is it important to you? Yeah. Because you care, right? Yeah. I'm not going to tell you you care about your teeth. I need you to tell me. So you're here because you care about your teeth. Is that about right? Yeah. Cool, man. Let's check them out. I said alignment. So once I've got alignment, now I'm going to go through and do the same thing. We take our exam. We take a look. We say this. We see that. And then I'm going to go and figure out where, where are you in this funnel essentially of awareness interest and yes that's how every decision gets made right yeah you need to be aware of the problem you need to care about it enough and then you got to be like burning desire yeah i'm gonna do this and you act and people come in there with low level of aware and care and we just start like you have uh, this crowding you have this tooth here you have and we speak at people yeah yeah, yeah. we speak at them and they're disinterested in and that they don't, so give, I, a shit. They don't yeah. give a shit so what i do what i'd like to do is i say hey has anyone ever talked to you about your teeth being crowded down here I start with questions, okay? I'm sure if you've got super crowded teeth, you know about that, okay? Well, here's yeah. what I'm doing. I'm like, have you, have you ever noticed teeth are crowded down there? And they're going to give me what? Either yes or no. Usually, oh, yeah, I know. I'm like, has anyone ever talked to you about any of the solutions yeah. to do anything about that? Uh, you know, no, 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 no. Even though they had, like, since they yeah. were a little kid, someone's been telling them to do ortho, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. And I do this little trick, okay? I'm giving you a lot of sauce today, guys. A lot of my secret sauce. I say, listen, I do this little thing because I know how the brain works. And I'll sit there and I'll be like, Necky, has it always been like that? That like, no doctor has ever talked to you about this before? Have you noticed that like, at all? Like, is yeah, there any yeah. bleeding there? Is there, any, is there anything there? Because there's a little principle, right? If I literally did it right now, I'm like, Akil, your watch, right? Is your watch strap always look like that? No. No? Like when it fits like that, is it, is it a problem for you or is it okay? What's happening in your brain right now? Everything What's in your issue? brain is yeah. like, what? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. As opposed to me just telling you, your brain is saying it. Whether you're saying it out loud or not, I know that everything in you is asking, why do you keep asking six questions about the same teeth being crowded? Why do you keep asking about my watch? Is something wrong with my watch? That monkey in your brain is going off, and I want it to. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be invited to go and give you a I'm concerned conversation. I'm concerned because when I look at teeth like that, I know that they're hard to keep clean and you got inflammation. And when I look at that and see how your teeth are biting together, you're destroying your, you're destroying your teeth every time you bite together. And then I hit them with the really important magic question, which is like, Nike, is that important to you? Yeah. Is it important for you not to have your teeth be destroyed? Absolutely. Now you've invited the solution, yeah. right? 
Otherwise, I'm just talking, right? You're yeah. on that journey with me. Is it important for you? Tell me no. I'll walk out of the room. I always joke, my dad's that guy. Nope, everything's yeah. good. Leave me alone. <laughs> Peace. You know? yeah. if, if, if you see my dad, it's all good. I'm going to leave. I'm like, he's not interested. He doesn't want to be here. It's okay. But if you're going to walk down that journey with me, I'll say, is, that, is it important for you to make sure your, your, your teeth are healthy? You told me this why you're here, right? I don't yeah. say it like that, but I'm yeah. like, we aligned on that, right? And if you say yes, which they always do, now you're invited into a solution conversation. Here's what we need to do, Neki, to make this better. See, the issue with that, though, is it sometimes gets labeled as sales. And then people see that and they go, uh, uh, I don't want it. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Right. So well, here's the thing. Like, why would you, you label that as sales? That's, I think it's an interesting thing. Like why, who, who, who thinks it's no, I patient? would I wouldn't see it in that you know, from that perspective when it comes to patients, because it's like like you said, it, it doesn't matter how good you sing in the shower. If you can't sing on stage. Yeah. <laughs> It don't matter, right? Because yeah. you're not you're not good on stage. Yeah. So if you can if you could play the best basketball in the world, but you can only play on your driveway. Yeah, that's how I am, by the way. I'm amazing. I'm Michael Jordan <laughs> against my against my son. <laughs> He's got his own shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dunks on his like five year old. Just yeah. <laughs> I never let him win. I never let him win. <laughs> he uses his baby powder. <laughs> but um, it doesn't matter. I, I don't. But here's the thing. In my again, in my in my in my viewpoint on this whole thing, I don't I don't think it I don't think of it as sales. I don't think I'm even that that word has got this weird connotation, right? Like if, if someone sells you a car, is that a bad thing? I need a car. I, I, they're solving a need for me. You know what I mean? Even the connotation, we, we have this really allergic thing in dentistry to like sales. And I get it. Like we don't want to be salespeople, but I, it's problem solving. I want to be a problem solver and I see a problem. I want to know if you're aligned to that problem. Tell me no. I'm not going to headlock you, right? There's no, there's no version of a headlock if you say, hey, look, I'm not interested. I'm like, cool. But if, here's I always say this. I always say this. If patients knew what you knew, if, if every patient that you saw knew exactly what you knew, what, 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 what number of patients would say no to you? Zero. Zero. Yeah. So the fact that they're saying no to you, what does it mean? This means you didn't educate them or advocate That's for them true. or, or, or yeah. help them understand. Because if you knew what I knew, there is there is 100% case acceptance rate. Yeah. 100%. Right? But to your point, it's not an education issue. It's not, again, because here's the thing, here's, what we're ta- here's, the, here's the other problem, okay? Dentists, dental school, all the nurturing, all the education, what happens? We get taught into the system that here's 42% of this, blah, 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 3.5 millimeters, this. We're so data-driven, blue personality type, we call that C personality on the disc profile. We're so analytical and data-driven, and this, I always tell the story, okay? I, I think all dentists have this characteristic, okay? And on the disc profile, there's like two opposites, okay? They call the yellow and the blue. So I'm a blue. My wife needed a new car, okay? The car lease was up. And the car lease was up, and I said, you know what? I don't care what you get. Just here's a budget. Just stick within the budget, okay? And she goes out and tries out a bunch of cars, and she comes back, and she's like, I want the gray one. And I said, okay. Uh, Where did you go see? She gives me a list, and this and that. And then what did I do? I made a spreadsheet, okay? Here's the cost. Here's the gas mileage. Here's the insurance rate. Here's the data-driven. That solutioning in my brain was it has to be a data-driven. So when you say educate your patients, that's what we're doing, right? We're giving them the data and this and the reasoning and the blah, 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 blah. And my wife looked at me like, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. I want, I want the gray, the gray one. one. Okay. Yeah. We got the gray one, okay? So, <laughs> you know, but the decision-making is different for different people and we don't need to learn how to communicate and first of all, assess who's in the room with you and understand Dude, their communication style. I've heard this so many times, but I've never understood it until now. That it, it, you, 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 are, you are, if yeah, I go- have you, have you heard this? classify every single person you talk to based on their personality and then you know how to communicate with them effectively it makes logical sense oh, I don't totally. know me, and you are, me and you are, are totally different learners yeah we're totally different communicators and he's able to classify that well no, I don't, i'm not saying i'm really great at it but you got to figure out how to do it you well, do it a lot and you start, that's what I'm but, but uh, you try you try I, I always ask the question what do you do for a living right? it's like it's one of my tricks is like yeah. what do you do for a living uh, you're an accountant oh cool do you love it yeah okay you do love it probably numbers oriented. You're yeah. probably this and that. You're probably not massively emotionally driven. How are you communicating? Are you loud? Are you, ex- like, you know, I, I'm sitting there doing all this analysis when yeah, I'm sitting yeah. there talking about, hey, how's your day? How's the Leafs? Blah, 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 blah. Who are you? Do you yeah. come in there real like this? You're holding your body language. I'm like, all right, we got to talk softer with you. We're going to do it together. I'm here. Yeah. We're going to fix these things together. How did, you, how did you practice this? Every day, man. It's just in the office. You know, it's, I'm still practicing it. You know what I mean? It's not, you, you don't check the box and say, I've got no. it. It's like, you, you know, you did a lot of surgery, man. You don't, you don't got it. Like, it, yeah. you, you learned a lot of stuff. You've developed a lot of skill, but there's always a new challenge. There's always Absolutely. a new persona. There's always a new, no a new question, case. But, like, I'm just, I'm just listening to you, and I'm like, man, it would be so much easier to communicate with my partner, like, yeah. doing it this way. It would be so much easier to communicate with my office manager if I knew 
or if I classified her personality, I would know how to approach the situation. So I, I think, think it's fucking I'm genius. A, I'm going to drop a jewel for you here, too. There's a, there's a great book on this, okay? It's called, it's by a guy named Thomas Erickson. They should pay me how much to promote this book. It's called Surrounded by Idiots, okay? The book is called Surrounded by Idiots. Right. I'll give you the punchline real quick, okay? The punchline is literally that, that story just told about me and my wife. When we were sitting there arguing about this car, we're both looking across the table, right, and thinking the same thing. What's wrong with you? Yeah. So you, you and your own persona are going to only believe the people like you all right, by the way, that's what dentists do, right? We get together at conventions like this, and we all sit there, and we geek out together, and we think, yeah, these guys are good. Yes, the patients are all crazy. Look, look around. Everybody agrees with what we're supposed to be doing. That's not how it works in real life, right? So we work, we work out with people. You can't just, like, selectively choose, and that's, I mean, that's perspective. I know people who actually have that perspective. I only work with people who want to work with me. Yeah. And I, if that's who you want to be, I guess that's cool too, right? But I'm trying Damn. to, again, I'm trying to impact many people. That means I need to understand people. I need to figure out how to get in there and help you on your terms, not my terms. It's not 1985, right? Yeah. The doctor walks in the room and says, I'm Dr. So-and-so, do this. Cool, I'm leaving. Yeah. And, I, you know, my parents' generation to this day, ah, whatever the doctor said, I was, I was telling story. My mom had knee surgery, right? That's a good one too. My mom had knee surgery. She had a second knee surgery just now. Before the first knee surgery, she went to go see the see the doc, and like you know, I wasn't able to go to consult with her. And then she came back, and you know, I'm I'm nerding out, and I'm like, well, tell me, what ha what knee? How, yeah. how are they gonna do it? Partial, full? Where's the incisions? How are they gonna do that? What's your rehab gonna look like? You know what my mom said to me? I, I think know. they're gonna do the left one. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. So we talk about that. educating your patients, right? Yeah. Yeah, I okay. think they're gonna do the left one. She does not care about that. She's not paying attention to the details of this, that, and the other thing. She just needs emotional trust. And she's good. What's interesting, though, is like a lot of these changes, we can have like these like huge like revelations here, right? And you can be like, oh my God, I don't know why I do that. Or you can read a book and be like, oh my God, that's so obvious. I don't know why I do that. Yeah. The next step is, okay, like you've practiced. Like reading a book is just practice. Now you got to get in the game. And it's like none of the move, the needle does not move in practice in like this hypothetical. I know it does normally. Maybe it's a bad analogy. But it only moves in the game. So it's like, you know, my girlfriend and I, like we'll be having a conversation. And, you know, well, before the conversation, <laughs> conversation, <laughs> before the conversation or the fight, we'll, you know, I'll know what's going on and why. Like there was a period of like our relationship where I was like self-destructive in some ways, right? Not in like a, you know, I'm doing drugs kind of way, but yeah. just like, Emotionally self-destructive. And then, you know, I knew that. Like being self-destructive, being self-destructive. Then it would happen. And I was being self-destructive. And it was like, I talked about it over there for like 20 hours cumulatively. But it wasn't until I actually got in the situation. Like when I got in the arena and in an argument, I was like, I'm being self-destructive. And it didn't change it. But the fact that I was able to pin it down in the moment was the beginning of like all the rest of the change. Yeah, I talk about this, this, this framework I use for change management, I call it RISE principle, right? So R-I-S-E. Step one to doing anything differently is to recognize, right? Step one is to have awareness. You gotta sit there and be like, yeah, that's real, that's happening. And there's only two places to get that. You're either gonna be one of the super blessed souls in this world, which I've only probably met five my entire life, who have self-awareness, who can sit there and authentically look at the situation and be like, yep, this is where I'm at. That's hard, oh, that's it's hard. Impossible. So the yeah. other place to get it is through feedback. Yeah. And to do that, you've got to be open to feedback, right? Most people close themselves off to feedback. Oh, Their egos it. don't want to hear the feedback. Dude, so, I love this guy. So awareness oh and recognition yeah. is, is the first step. Once you've got recognition, then you can move to step two is I, which is about interpretation. This is where you get analytical. You understand, look, why is this a problem? Analytically, emotionally separated from the moment to say, what is happening here? What is going on here? Why is it important? You're building your why. And I guess that's the mirror, that's the mirror in the window conversation. I always play that. I talk with the, my son. My son is young, so we play. He's, he always asking why, right? It's called the five why game. Ask yourself why five times. You're gonna get to the root of most things. It's the five whys. Why? 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 Yeah, it's you. Yeah. And what is it about me? And why is it a big deal? So the why. And then the R, the S, is about strategy. The S is about strategy. Now this is where you go and figure out what do I gotta go do. And then the E is an execution. And then you do it again. I tell the story about I was working out a lot a couple years ago before I hurt my back, <laughs> and. I was telling my sons about how I met this 100-year-old uh, uh, marathon runner out of, out of the UK. I'm not sure you've heard of this guy, uh, Foja Singh. He's like 100 years old. He's running marathons. I'm like, yeah, you know, I was going to run a marathon for you. I got injured. I never got back. And my son called me out. He said, hey, listen, um, why don't you run a marathon now? And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll run a marathon. I will run a marathon now. So I, I, I Googled it, right? I'm like, oh, when's the next marathon in Toronto? And it was in three weeks. Three weeks, right? So then I went and Googled, how do you train for a marathon in three weeks? <laughs> okay. 
And then I'm sitting there, and it's like there's no plan to do that. But I'm sitting there, I'm like, all right, look, I recognize I want to do this to go teach my son some type of lesson. I interpreted the value of this, and I said, what's the strategy? I'm going to run on these days, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to rest on these days, and I'm going to have to make this happen on this day and this day. And he's committed to that plan of execution, and I do it. And three weeks later, I did a half marathon. But it was still, still, man, awesome. it was still pretty good, man, yeah, yeah. on three weeks training. My physiotherapist is still upset. That was four years ago. Um, but that's how you do anything. At the end of the day, it's like that whole cycle right there. And that's implementing change in your, in your practice, how we implemented our Invisalign program to be one of the top 1% in North America, how, how we did all these things. It's about recognizing what's up, interpret the value, you know, what's going on, and really getting honest in that moment. And then strategy and execution. And it's not perfect. You're going to come back. You're going to come back. You're going to come back again and again and again and again. Self-awareness, man. Wow. That's like well, self-awareness is hard. Like you, the, the, the real thing is this. The real thing is about being a magnet and being open to other people's feedback yeah. with a filter. You got to understand, everyone, you, know, you can say whatever you want about me. You know what I mean? And you might be right, you might be wrong, but I, I got to be open to hearing it. You know what I mean? I got to still make a decision of whether I believe it or not. Okay? And that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, self-awareness is incredibly hard. I, like I said, I've known three Dude, or five so people hard. in my entire life who so I look at and I'm like, hard. damn. You got the sauce. And by the yeah. way, those are the most successful people I know, okay? The ones with elevators in their homes, all of them. They, can, they have got true self-awareness, okay? They figured it out. They've understood who they are and how they fit and how things affect them. They've really figured it out. Hmm. But everybody else, for the rest of us, we've got to be open to taking feedback, you know? There's a thing, there's a story about feedback as a gift. We always take feedback as an arrow. You never give feedback to people you don't care about. So we hear criticism. We hear constructive criticism or criticism. We hear all that stuff. But if we sit there and be able to catch it before it hits the emotional piece, yeah. now you have a chance. We call them haters. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Yeah, but yeah, even yeah. the self-awareness piece, because you can have a ton of self-awareness. And then I've had this, you know, going into, you know, certain periods. Or, you know, I'll be, I'll be like, ah, yeah, I feel pre pretty self-aware. Like, my ego is down. Like, I have all the stuff under control. And then there'll be like an event and it'll be like an event like maybe like this where you're surrounded by super successful people and you know you're you're kind of like putting it in a scenario and it's kind of like oh shit it's like you know that's shifted now you're like your perspective shifted and you have to be self-aware again and it's in the moment you're like having a conversation I'm like why am i talking about this i don't want to talk about this i don't want the other person to care about the thing i'm talking about you know, I don't want them to judge me just because of this. So it's like, why am I talking about it? Yeah, the, the game, the game never ends, man. Yeah, <laughs> you it never. Doesn't. Here's what I realized, man. Yeah. I don't know if you ever figure it out. You don't ever figure it out. No. You just keep playing the game, and you're not playing to win it. You're just playing because you're. That's life, man. That's like, that's life. That's the whole experience of the thing. It's just to keep going through it and evolving and changing and taking things in, man. That's it. So, Sonny, it's uh, 2023. Where do you see yourself in five years? Ooh. I don't know, man. That's a good question. I think um, I set goals like everybody. I think most people set goals. Are on they things. like descriptive goals but or measurable goals? I think, I think they're, my goals have changed and are changing and evolving in the last like little bit for me. Okay. I've, I've, I've checked off a lot of the boxes of the things that I thought that I wanted. And it's a weird thing. Like when you get there, you're like, oh, okay, cool. This doesn't feel like the top of the mountain. So I, I, I tell this thing about... I think we were talking about this last time. Um, I'm going through my midlife crisis, right? So I'm getting new tattoos everywhere, and I'm like doing things. So like one of the things I'm working on is, is uh, there's 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 this, there's this image of these two triangles, right? Which is the two mountains, the two mountain thing, right? And they say that like the first the first mountain that you want to climb in life is where you is where you shine. It's where you learn to grow your ability, your skill, your talent, your 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 craft, your all the stuff to go and make yourself great. And then the second mountain is where you give it all away. So I'm at this weird place right now. It's like, I don't know if I'm still climbing the first mountain or I'm starting to climb the second mountain. Maybe I'm climbing both mountains. So I don't know if I, if I have a specific answer to that, but I'm, I'm kind of in this interesting place where I'm trying to figure out, am I, am I, am I, am I doing both? Am I, am I kind of pivoting or, or, or where yeah. I'm at? But I'll tell you, I'm getting a lot of energy um, just personally from like chatting and just interacting with guys like yeah. you guys and just, you know, um, and, and just kind of put it out there and see how people react to it. So where do you see... Like, or where do you find most of your day? Do you find it in self-reflection? Because that's what I'm seeing from you. No, man. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in the hustle, man. I'm. 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 I'm grinding. Like, no, I, no, no, I, no. I carve I out time. That. I carve out time yeah. every morning. My morning routine. I do not mess with. I don't care what's happening. I don't care how many drinks I had the night before. Yeah. I am. I am spending time every single morning, uh, reflecting, meditating, journaling, uh, creating space for my my thoughts to not overwhelm you know, my, my emotional experience of life. 
uh, it's not a perfect science. Yeah. It, you know, there, there are times where that, uh, no matter how much you journal and meditate, it's still there. But I think having awareness around it, it starts to become lighter and different. So I, 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 I work, man. I, I grind it out. I do. I solve a million problems a day. Uh, people calling me for all kinds of things, little things, big things. Sometimes in the middle of the day, uh, can't get the distal root tip out. Uh, can you come down here? I'm like, uh, I'm 15 <laughs> minutes away. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. cool. I, I'm doing all kinds of stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that there's. I, I value I value the reflection piece. I think yeah. it's really important. Yeah, can't, can't keep running all the time, right? How about you? Five years. Five years. I honestly, I'm having so much fun right now. I've been asking that, and I've been asking that to myself, and I'm like, I don't know if I could, if I could answer that question right now. I, I really yeah, don't have an answer. I'm for on that. the same thing. I'm like, I, I'm almost like at this place where like, let's go explore, man. Like, yeah. Let's go explore and create. It's like, there's a thing about like. Here's an interesting thing, right? About I don't know, maybe this is true or not, but my experience, life teaches me like everyone wants to be an artist and express their creativity. I think at the end of the day, that's how we're the most happiest is when we're finding some ways to express our creativity, whatever yes. that means yeah. to you. I don't care if you paint, you sing, you dance, you write, you talk, you whatever the heck yeah. it is. But if you can find, that's why I man, I start to envy the artist. It's like damn, all day, the creativity, all day, yeah. you just get to go and like create. Yeah. Yes. That's. That's cool. Yeah. That's self-expression, right? That's what I think we all want as human beings. We want to be like expressed. Yeah. And there's a million ways to perform. And that dentistry, man. You can do that through your through your through your dentistry too. You can do it a bunch of ways. What a what a quote. Everyone wants to be an artist. So you're you're full of good shit, man. It's funny. My wife says that, but she leaves out one word. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I told Sunny. I was like, so for the listeners, I I rent office space from Sunny. And I'm like, I will do it on, like, it was, I had, a, I had a couple of options available. And I was like, it's further, it's not as convenient, but I was like, I'll do it if you let me buy you coffee once a month. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to tell Akil I don't drink coffee, but it's <laughs> fine. I'll still, we'll still do it. <laughs> we'll still do it. We'll still do okay, it. Okay, I'll buy you a mimosa. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey uh, Sonny, what would you tell a grad graduating this year? Uh... <laughs> Um, there's a lot more to learn than what you what you've been taught, and I think being open and curious. Here's the thing about about being a student, from what I remember, and even just talking to new grads, you know, that come into our practice looking for associateships and stuff. Um, the people who struggle, you know, the people who struggle are are always showing one of three signs. Um, people who are massively rigid, they only believe there's one way to do things right, and this is the one dentists struggle with the most because your whole life. Your whole life you were told that that's the right way to do the crown and there's no other right way. And th that's the right way to extract the tooth and there's no other right way. It's because you know, your grades are going to go down if you do it any other way. And in reality, what happens? You, I mean, you do a ton yeah. of surgery, right? Yeah. Shit goes sideways. You got to get creative. You got to figure it out. You got to have a game plan, obviously. Yeah. But like, in your hyper rigid, this is how you get stressed out as being a dentist. Because, oh my God, I didn't go exactly the way I planned it to go. And you start losing your shit. Learning to be kind to yourself and flexible is a massively important skill. Absolutely. They talk about perfectionism. Some people play it up as a joke, like, oh, that's my, that's my, you know, that's the thing that's not so good about me, but it's a positive and a negative. Yeah, it's, yeah. No, it's a disease. I swear to God, if you tell me that you, you are a perfectionist, I'm, I'm gonna, I want to I wanna life coach you forever because I'm worried about you. Yeah. Like from my soul because no, that, that, it, that kills. Yeah. It absolutely can. The thing is, our, our whole thing nurtures this in, 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 in us. So one is like be or flexible. Or it's hammered into us. It's hammered in into us. It's culture. It's culture. Yeah. It's culture, right? Yeah. It's culture. So it's like, one is be flexible. Be patient and kind with yourself and be flexible. Be open to learning. Number two is uh, people fail because of competency gaps. Okay? We all have them. <laughs> You've got to be passionate. A competency gap. You know, the thing you should be able to do and the thing you can do? Yeah. <laughs> so you got to get better at your craft. Right? So spend the energy and the time and learn and educate yourself and uh, take courses and, and learn how to do the things that you need to be able to do. So closing the competency gap clinically, but also on, like I said, patient management and, and communication and leadership. Hey, guess what, doctor? When you become doctor, you're a leader. No one taught you how. You gotta spend some energy in learning how to lead people, because they will look at you. What do we do? What do we do, doc? Right? And you have to figure that out. So learning how to, be, how to, get, how to close that competency gaps that you need to close, number two. And number three is like, it's attitude. I think at the end of the day, you know, what, what people fail is, is they, is they, they develop um, this sort of nonchalantness or the lack of passion. You know, I say, people who are successful, all the successful people I've ever met in my life, are massively passionate and have massive awareness, either self-awareness or or, their, or or in their ability to take feedback. So, that was more than one thing. But that's that's what I would say is like that's that's what you're going into. You're going into this world where everything you've been taught was to get you through boards. Okay, let's just be yeah. real. 
Now you got to go play this game and kinda, what are you here for? You're here yeah. to help people and help their lives and, and impact your community and, and, and yourself and your life and earn money and have freedoms and buy a boat, whatever you want, right? Like, it's, a, it's, it's all that type of stuff, so. Damn. Dude, will you be my friend? <laughs> I've been looking for you forever, man. We, we're IG friends now. We're, now we're in real life. It's all good. Dude, I, it's I'm, all good. I'm, I'm speechless and I'm blown away. I feel like there's, there's, we've taken a very different approach to dentistry. We've taken a different approach to life. We've taken a different approach to our, our values as, as people. Of course, we want to do the best for each other, but we've, we've done great things in different directions. And it shows exactly what you said. There's multiple ways to do something. Be flexible. But I'm just so... I know I've just I met you online, but I met you for the first time today. I'm proud of you, dude. I appreciate that, man. Like you've done appreciate this that. incredible self diving, self reflection, this journey to try to understand our minds, understand psychology, and, and I have never done that. I've heard about it, and I've always maybe discounted it because I can smile at people. You know what I mean? And I've discounted that ability to really understand what the other person is thinking until now. You've made it clear to me how important that is. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Akil's just over here like his mind is turning or he's sleeping. I can't <laughs> tell. <laughs> we got to get that coffee. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I, you gave I, us a lot to think about. That was, that was probably one of the most insightful conversations we've ever had on the show. I appreciate Absolutely, that, guys. Absolutely, man. I agree. Wow. Sonny, thank you so much. Appreciate wow, it, guys. This is incredible, dude. This was dope. Yeah. This is dope. Dude, I feel like he needs to replace me, man. <laughs> <laughs> One brown guy for another. Yeah, whatever, <laughs> man. Welcome to the Hi, I'm Do- Neki. Is that a that sweater? Man. Yeah, dude. Dude, it's the Hi, I'm Doctor sweater. Oh, dude, I see you got yours on too. Looking sharp, bro. Dude, where'd you get yours from? Uh, it, it was super easy, man. I just went on to our website, www.highimdoctor.com. That's H-I-I-M-D-R.com. We have a website. We must be raking in cash from swelling, selling these sweaters. Dude, we are killing it. I mean, if, if that includes losing money on every single sweater that we make, I, I, I think we're doing really well. Yeah, Neki and I are donating all proceeds, which is zero to charity because we are losing money <laughs> we're, we're, so I, I wonder if the charity will pay us i think i think we got something here man let's, let's keep on <laughs> let's keep on losing money on every sweater all righty guys go check us out hi i'm doctor.com let's see